was um, a brief look at some rappers, all of whom are fairly sort of, I don't know, a bit um, sexist, it seems, the male rappers. Do you think that's true? Yeah, they are very sexist. They talk about girls a lot, but that's why we made on our album, we have a new album out, it's called Hot, Cool and Vicious. There's a cut on it um, called Tramp, and it's about guys. We have a different meaning for the word tramp. It means a guy who's very rude and always thinking about getting into girls. You know, <laughs> into your pants, <laughs> right. <laughs> why do you think that, that, that it does seem to be a particularly, it's a bit like heavy metal, and yet you don't expect rapping to be um, all about girls and all about, you know, how they're cheap, cheap, unfit mothers and it's all a, that kind of thing. Why is that a ro arisen so much? It's a hard, it's, a, it, it's hip, hip hop, it's a hardcore type of mm -hmm. groove, yeah. you know, it's different from R&B. Females can get into R&B because it's a little softer. So you don't expect females to be so rough and so aggressive, you know. Mm -hmm. That's why I think it is. Now, uh, do you think that your lyrics will be taken as a kind of serious feminist statement? Oh, definitely. Yeah. After this album, we're going to drop a few singles off this album, but after this album, we're going to make a record called Korea girls. girls and and it is it's a feminist attitude this is 1987 it's year of the ladies <laughs> now you've been working um, with the producer I have to look at his name Herbie Lovebug Azor yes yeah. that's his name he used to be in a group called the Super Lovers that's where he gets the love bug from it's a good name isn't it love bug yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, how much influence does he have on on the work you've been doing uh, He's, um, well, that's the main man, because um, he wrote all the music and most of the lyrics. As we got along, Salt and I collaborated together, but he wrote all the music as far as from the first hit to Showstopper to I'll Take Your Man to the album. Everything was his ideal concept. Yeah, because he brought us into this. We were never rappers. We used to be sort of into, um, Sandy was into punk rock, punk rock, you know, so. the dress, the <laughs> coat, the clothes and everything. And um, we worked at Sears. We were in college, college. And he comes <laughs> up and he said, well, let's make a record, you know. So we, we felt, hey, we'll give it a try. We played it on the air. We got requests. We got record companies calling us. And, and it just fell into our yeah. laps. We were in school. We never thought of that. That was this the before. answer to Dougie Fresh and Slick Rick, the show. Mm. Right? We made the show Stopper. So, and it, that became the hit. And what do you think it was about you that um, he spotted across the crowded playground? Loud. Loudiness. You were loud. <laughs> yeah. Not exactly. shy or anything like that. It was loud. And as far as our voices, we used to play around at jobs all night and pretend, you know, we rap here and just sing. So, you know, he picked up how our voice was kind of like, we took it from the diaphragm. Like, we taught. No, D. It's on like on the chest, right? Yeah. Most you know, girl rappers rap in their head voice, and we, we, you know, <laughs> we have a more deeper sort of voice, so it's easier to listen to. And on that note, we're going to go over to Jules. Good old uh, Salt and Pepper and Paula there. One of the most complicated pieces ever to play on the piano is Rimsky Korsakoff's Eighth Concerto. As it's the last program, I'm not going to attempt it. Instead, here on video, we have the cure with Why Can't I Be You.